Uh, first, I thank uh, uh, Professor Cranston for our opening remarks. Now I introduce uh, today our speak, uh, first speaker, Professor Rudy Leon de Wadi. Uh, Professor, uh, I introduce uh, Professor Rudy. Uh, he is a uh, teaching appointment uh, at the University of Munster. Uh, he is the medical director of clinical OBGYN and gynecology oncology at the Press Clinic of Oldenburg. He is the head of University Clinical OBGYN and uh, uh, Faculty of Medicine and Health Science, uh, Carvon Ozitsky University. She is also a full professor of OBGYN, University of Oldenburg, Germany. Uh, uh, she is the chief medical officer of Price Hospital, University of Med Medicine, Oldenburg, Germany. Uh, today, uh, he will give us a talk, uh, should HIFU be considered as alternative non-surgical treatment of adenomyosis in uh, non-Asiatic countries? Uh, please, Professor Wadi. That's welcome. Thank you very Wadi. much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Ding. Thank you very much, Professor D. Thank you very much, David, for this kind introduction. So today we are talking about adenomyosis. And um, I am very thankful to have the opportunity to talk to you about adenomyosis because adenomyosis is a big problem in gynecology. Let's start with my presentation. So the question is, where, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear. Perfect. So adenomyosis is a big problem because adenomyosis is a disease of the uterine wall and of the complete uterine wall. Very seldom adenomyosis, which is endometriosis of the uterine wall, is isolated in a small part of the uterine wall. Nearly always there is a diffuse adenomyotic tissue in the uterine wall. And very often those patients have not only hypermenorrhea, dysmenorrhea and bleeding disorders, but they also have severe pain and they want to get pregnant. So all the surgical possibilities that we have until now are taking out the womb, doing an hysterectomy or performing a very difficult surgical technique, namely cutting the uterus in many pieces and putting it together again as a reconstructive surgery. During the years that have passed, we can see that we are going from great trauma in open surgery, going to more minimal invasive surgery. So the normal question that is arising right now is in case of adenomyosis, can we start looking at the disease which could be possibly treated by something more small than an hysterectomy, which is obviously not possible in case of people who want to get pregnant, or in cases that we conserve the uterus, could we try to avoid major surgery, cutting the uterus in many pieces and putting it together afterwards? So you all know how conventional surgery is looking like. You all know how laparoscopic procedures look like. The question that we have to answer and should make a planning for the future is, is HIFU possibly a solution for adenomyosis? We all know how HIFU works. We are putting in some kind of energy, namely ultrasound energy, under ultrasound guidance into the uterus. It is focused. This means the energy starts on a broad spectrum outside, outside of the body and goes to a special point into the body. We all know that we can do an MRI to exactly differentiate the tissue that we want to target by our focused ultrasound. But the, there are many techniques right now that are using real-time diagnostic ultrasound to guide the energy, the high-frequency energy ultrasound to the point that we want to reach, where we want to put our energy. The energy is put at small focus, small focus of one to three millimeter. 
This focus can be achieved by transforming, by, the, by using the transducer and by focusing the waves onto the spot that has to be reached. And this is, of course, something that seems very important in case of adenomyosis, because we can try to save as much of myometrium as we can to keep the circumference, to keep the whole of the body of the uterus in a good shape to have the possibility to have a pregnancy in future. We all know that you can target those small spots and you can visualize them by using ultrasound. There is a change in gray color. There's a change in the color of the ultrasound, of the diagnostic ultrasound, when the target is reached, when the power spots are applied. So at the same time, when you are performing your high energy, when you are putting your foci, you can see in the real time ultrasound that you reached your target and you can modify to conserve enough myometrium going to the serosa to be sure that there is no defect in the circumference of the uterus to make sure that later a pregnancy can be carried out. The great changes, the great scale changes can be visualized during the whole of the application of the eye energy. The MRI is only put into your computer as an extra security because you can follow your surgery the whole time by doing the ultrasound by yourself. So the whole of the surgery can be done by the ultrasound specialist together or in one person with the surgeon. The patients only need sedation and this is important because we will talk about possible complications later on. Here you see a case of adenomyosis and you see how the adenomyosis is targeted, is reached and can be focused, especially on the diseased tissue, keeping the circumference, keeping the neighborhood of the normal myometrium intact to reserve, to pre-reserve a functional uterus. And of course, if people are starting or not so, have, haven't got a high expertise, there is always help coming from people that have high experience and especially in the Asia, Asian countries, there is high experience in applying HIFU for diseases of the uterine wall. Well, minimal invasive surgery is already a big profit and a big benefit for the patients. Doing minimal excess surgery, even without cutting, will conserve all the possibilities that we have resecting or ablating or destroying the adenomyotic tissue and thereby even omitting all scars that are possibly necessary when doing minimal invasive surgery. Three quarters of all adenomyotic surgery right now is done open. So the jump would be from open surgery without going to minimal invasive surgery into the HIFU. This would be a double jump and a double benefit for the patient. There are, of course, many possibilities where we can use HIFU in cases of gynecology, in gynecological disease. But we think that especially in adenomyosis, this is a system a technique for the future, because in adenomyosis, there is not really a good surgical technique or a conserving uterus conserving technique or a technique 
that make sure that afterwards the people can still get pregnant. If the surgery is done, and the surgery, I mean the ablation by Haifu, you can see afterwards that there is, of course, still a remnant. The remnant is not the adenomyotic tissue because this tissue has been destroyed. It is the destroyed tissue that can still be seen. And during the weeks and months after the Haifu ablation, this remnant, this residual tissue goes away. Perhaps it doesn't go away completely, but at the end, what we want is not that the disease or that what we see disappears completely. What we want is that the, the problems of the patients, the complaints of the patients go away. And this means the bleeding disorders, the pains are going away and she still has the possibility to get pregnant. So at the end, there is some remnant to be seen, but this goes away over the years, over the months to come. And it is really true, the dysmenorrhea is going away, it disappears, eventually not completely, but it is diminished and some people say it is completely gone. Also the menstrual volume, the residual volume is going down. In cases of adenomyosis, there are some studies. Well, there are not studies on 10,000 patients. In the Asian countries, there are more than 100,000 patients that have already been treated with HIFU. But in cases of adenomyosis, looking at the pregnancies, those major studies are not there yet. But the studies that we have, have are very promising and are showing that after a therapy of diffuse adenomyosis, pregnancies are possible. And not only pregnancies, but healthy babies delivered. Take baby home rate. There is no technique without complications. So there is always some risk. The risk is there when you do open surgery. The risk is there when you do minimal invasive surgery. In case of HIFU, if you have a lot of fat in the abdomen, there can be a problem. There is some trick that you can use with a pat, but still there can be some problem due to the heat accumulation. Most of those problems resolve without any intervention afterwards. If the adenomyotic tissue is going into the cavity after it, it has been ablated, then of course there will be abnormal discharge through the vagina or an abnormal bleeding. But this of course only stays as long as the person is rejecting the tissue, is ejecting the tissue transvaginally. At the time where the whole of the ablated tissue has been ejected by the body, then eventually it stops by itself. In cases where the tissue is not coming out of the uterus, an hysteroscopic um, evacuation is st still possible, leaving the intact myometrium of the uterus there. So it, as you can see in this contrast T1, tissue, uh, T1 picture, you see that the myometrium surrounding the ablated adenomyotic tissue is completely intact. And this is what is absolutely necessary to have a high take baby home rate. Bowel perforation, in case of open surgery, we have bowel perforation. In case of minimal invasive surgery, we have bowel perforation. We also have this, especially in the learning curve of HIFU, but it's a very low frequency. And if you know this can happen, you can have a, an eye on it. The risk is very low, as you can see in this gra graphic. Pelvic pain, nausea, and thrombosis are very rare, very, very rare. The pelvic pain 
usually usually goes away by itself or by taking non-inflammatory uh, drugs, anti-inflammatory drugs, the nausea itself, symptomatic drugs, the vein thrombosis is very seldom. If looking at the data that we already have, as said before, there are more than 100,000 patients treated in case of benign diseases of the uterine wall. So there is a high experience with the complications that are there, and they are quite low. Also in adenomyosis, there are a lot of patients already taken care of with good results. Concerning the pregnancy rates, major studies are still being done. Dear ladies and gentlemen, Dear ladies and gentlemen, as we go from open surgery towards minimal excess surgery, there is still the future to come. Standing at the same place and not moving is always bad, not only in life, also in gynecological surgery. So we should look beyond the horizons. Be looking beyond the horizons means that in case of adenomyosis, we have a high complaint rate of the patients, and we have a lot of women who still want to become pregnant. If we bring all this together, then I am sure that in future, adenomyosis treatment by HIFU is qualified. Qualified giving patients, again, a chance to live without their complaints and having the possibility to get pregnant. And because of the good results we have of the Asian countries, we are now in the European Union looking for major studies to check this also for our European people. But concerning the data we have right now, the technique looks very promising. Dear presidents, dear chairman, dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Professor Reldy. Uh, have audience uh, have a questions? Yeah, uh, Professor D, uh, have a question. Is the high food treatment done only in one sitting, or what is the recurrence rate in terms of symptoms? Will there uh, be a uterine size amenable to high food? Well, there is the possibility, of course, to do the therapy in one session, but this is absolutely not necessary. If you see that it could be beneficial for the patient to do your surgery or your high food treatment in more than one session, this is absolutely possible. So out of my point of view, when possible in one session, do it in one session. But if not possible or not feasible or out of point of view of the gynecologist, not the right way to do it, you can do it in many sessions. There is absolutely nothing that is that speaks against this measurement. OK, uh, the second question is, what is the recurrence rate? in terms of symptoms? Well, of course, you are treating the uterus. You are not taking out the uterus. This means that after the high food treatment, there is recurrence because the uterus is still in place. But this is, of course, the same problem if you are doing a gynecological surgery in adenomyosis. As long as the uterus is in place, you can have a recurrence of the disease. As said before, even if there is a recurrence, you could do a repeat ablation with the HIFU. Doing a repeat surgery is very difficult. The first surgery is already very difficult. Doing a repeat surgery in case of adenomyosis is extremely difficult. So out of my point of view, recurrence, yes, because as long as you don't do the hysterectomy, you can have recurrence. 
but the recurrence is not higher as in cases of surgery, and you can do a repeat HIFU. This is, in cases of surgery, nearly impossible. OK. Another question is, uh, what is the biggest uh, uterine size that can be treated diffuse uh, adenomyosis? Well, <laughs> this depends on, <laughs> on the experience of the person who is doing the treatment. I am sure that when you are starting your treatment, you are not doing very uh, big uteri. You are not doing them because it's not the technique, the IFU technique. You have to be experienced. You have to have a teaching. You have to have a, a quality management. So at the beginning, you should start with, for example, myoma or with um, solitary adenomyosis. If you are more experienced, you can do the size is impossible, is uh, unimportant. You can do whatever size you want, eventually in more than one session, because the lady is sedated. The lady is not in narcosis. So somewhere in time, she will say, now I, I feel more pain or, or, or the heat is, is uh, expanding. And then you stop your ablation. And eventually a few weeks later, you continue. OK. Uh, there are question is uh, how much of the adenomas is, is ablated in the initial treatment? Yeah, this is the same answer. It is the, the experience of the person who is doing the haifu and what the, the, the lady itself can bear. And this is dif different, depends on what she is accepting when she is in sedation. But as says before, I said before, this is not a major problem because you can repeat after a few weeks. And uh, the question there is also what is in Europe? Uh, the the HIFU is um, implemented in the NICE criteria, for example, in the UK. So this means that for parts of, of uh, the Western world, is it, it is already accepted as a standard treatment. Okay. What is the take-home take home baby rate after adenomyosis of HIV treatment? Well, the take-home baby rate, as I said before, major studies are not there. The studies that we have right now is one on three. And one on three doesn't look so high, but one on three is extremely high. If you compare it with people who have no treatment of adenomyosis or people that have surgical treatment of adenomyosis. So at even if we would not find a higher frequency than one on three, okay. if I try to answer the last question again, okay. even if the major studies are not showing a frequency of take baby home of more than one on three, even then it would be a major success because not treating the patients has a very low rate of take baby home, and doing surgery is certainly lower than one on three. So even if we don't go higher than the one on three that we have right now, it would already be a major success. OK, a lot of questions. Uh, another question is uh, how soon after the first surgery can you do the repeat HIFU? Well, the people who are doing the HIFU say it can be repeated immediately. But we think to leave six weeks between the sessions would be good or even longer if the necrotic tissue hasn't come out or hasn't been resorbed or hasn't been retracted. So this is the case um, when you do an ultrasound, a diagnostic ultrasound control after the HIFU, you should have a look at what happens to the uterus and then decide. If, of course, you are doing, let's say, the front wall in the first session and the back wall in the next session, then there is, of course, no problem there. OK, the next question is, uh, what is the current EU uh, regulatory situation with HIFU? Where, is, where in Europe is HIFU being performed in routine clinical practice? Yeah, this is what I just answered. In uh, Western Europe, for example, in the UK, it is already adapted in the regulatory, in the regulations, in the NICE guidelines. And this is of course important because the UK has a very high standard of medicine in Europe. Many other countries are already doing HIFU in Europe, but it, 
in Europe, there is no uh, common regulatory system. So every country in Europe has got to do their own impregnation of their guidelines, of their regulatory bodies. So this means that if you have 30 countries in Europe, you have to do this 30 times. So it will take a long time, um, not only for Europe to look in one direction, but also for all the European countries to implement HIFU in their regulations. Okay. And the next question, will it more difficult to apply if the nation is posterior than the anterior? Yeah, of course. This is experience. Eh? This is experience. The smaller the, the adenomyosis, the more solitary the adenomyosis and the better reachable it is, it is, of course, easier to tackle. But the, the more difficult it becomes and the more diffuse, diffuse it becomes, the more expertise you use, you need to do the, the, the HIFU. This is a, a learning curve that you have to do. Okay, the last question is, is there any difference between MRI focus and the HIFU? Uh, regarding efficacy of treatment in, in adenomyosis. So this means, is the question, is there a difference between MRI, um, HIFU, and the ultrasound HIFU? Is this the question? Yeah. Yeah. So there is, for me, one very big difference that you don't need a radiologist when you do the ultrasound diagnostic and therapeutic. So out of my point of view, this is the very big difference between the both of them. Then we did a major study comparing the two, the two uh, treatment modalities and most of the modalities are better with the ultrasound, but also the MRI focused is as, as a good result. It's not that this means this is a bad result, but most of the, the parameters we checked were uh, in the benefit of the high food with ultrasound. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more question, one more last question. Is there an age limit of performing the high food treatment? No, there is not. But of course, normally you have no problems with your adenomyosis anymore if you are postmenopausal. So in case of the postmenopause and you don't take hormone replacement therapy, the adenomyosis will be sleeping soon. So in, in high age, normally you don't treat the adenomyosis anymore. So uh, the focus that we have is diffuse adenomyosis and this in patients who want to get pregnant because for those patients right now, we really don't have a good therapeutic aspect. So HIFU is promising. Okay, thank you, Professor Wildy. Thank you for your excellent speech. And thank you for your answer. So many questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ding. Thank you, thank Professor you. D. Thank you, David. Okay.